It's good to be here. It's a blessing. Thank you for coming and we're excited for uh, this morning but also tonight for what God is doing. Um, so I want you to know that you have incredible leaders in this church. I want to thank Pastor Philip and Amy and um, all the leadership and the volunteers and Pastor Brian and Rhonda for having us uh, every year to do this conference. You know, I travel the world and we go into many churches. This year I started in Germany, Switzerland, then came here and from here I'm going back to Dubai and then Bangkok. And so we go to many churches, and I can truly tell you that you have amazing leaders in this church, amazing people. Now, yes, let's give them a hand. And the worship, wow, that is amazing. You know, um, anointed worship is just as powerful as prophecy. And uh, it's incredible worship in this place. So don't neglect or be unthankful for what you have. You know, America is a nation of abundance, of more than enough. But when abundance is not stewarded, then people become unthankful and also unfaithful. Now, when you become unthankful and faithful and you go down that path, the next thing that happens is you lose your hunger. And that's the most dangerous thing that can happen to a Christian is to lose that. When you lose your hunger, you become completely irrelevant. Now, I want to encourage you to have a hunger. You know, expect, expect tonight when you come into this place that the Holy Spirit will move. When you pray, expect an answer and expect greater things, not the same level of outpouring. It's very important for us to honor and respect the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's not... God um, there, and then we have junior Jesus and mini Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And let's respect and honor Him to receive from Him when He shows up in your life and here tonight when He's here. Now, when the Holy Spirit shows up, it is the same power, it's the same Spirit that God has that's in our midst to, be, to bring changes. One touch from Him can change everything in a second. And I want you to have that expectancy, that hunger, that desire we can put a demand on the anointing, but the glory is manifested through hunger. When we have a hunger, then glory is manifested. Don't lose the hunger for God and for His Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray and we can get into the Word. Thank you, Father, for your Word. Lord, we are so grateful this morning that we have the Word and we can open it. It's available to us. Thank you, Lord, that this Word is just as relevant as it was 2,000 years ago, just as relevant today, Lord. Father, we pray this morning as we read the Word, we pray for revelation to come forth, to speak into this season. Lord, prepare every heart and mind right now to receive from you. Let us see. Open up our spiritual eyes for revelation, Lord. Give us revelation, not just me, but every person in this room this morning. Let them see and have their own revelation in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, you can read with me, says that, when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? He says, Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. So we have a man that's serving another man, and he says to him, Is there anything I can do for you? He says, Yes, I want double what you have. And then he says, You've asked for a difficult thing because I can only give you what I have. Now, if you want a double portion of that, only God can do that. And he says, so it will be yours when you are with me when I'm taken from you. I want you to understand this morning that he can serve his master for 20 years of his life. And then the last day, they can have an argument and they can leave him. And when he's taken from him, he will not receive that reward even though he's given 20 years of his life. And we often see this in the kingdom today and in the church today, people that give up or that leave the last moment just before the breakthrough. So he says, if you are with me when I'm taken from you, you will receive that double portion that is yours. Now this morning, I want to ask you two questions and um, I want you to give the answers of that and it'll be different because there's people in this season that God is assigning to your life. Now, in South Africa, our years are different from America. Our schooling year starts from January to December. It's just the opposite. And I know you're starting in July, August, and, uh, and there. So your new season is starting. And this morning, I want to make it easy for you 
in this new season to help you to understand what relationships or what things are important in the season. In the season, there's there's people that God is assigning to you in your life. And those people carry the double portion. They carry the breakthrough. They carry the keys to the next doors in your life. Now, to tell you the truth this morning, the 5,000 friends that you have on Facebook, when you go through a difficult time, they are not going to show up. You're going to get a like or a share. That's it. Nothing more. But they will not be there when you go through a difficult time. They will not respond and show up. But the people that God assigns to you in your life will be the people that will be there in the moment when you go through a crisis or a challenge in your life. And so this morning, I want you to identify who is the people that God is assigning you to in this season. I want you to make a list. Now, in the natural, you're being assigned to people. And in the spirit, you are being assigned to people. Obviously, in the natural, you are being assigned to your husband or wife. They play an important role. There's a covenant that's there. So that relationships are important in the natural. But in the spirit, you are assigned to people, and those people are assigned in seasons in your life. And I want you to evaluate and, say, and see who is assigned to you in this season, because that relationship must be a priority right now. It is impossible to spend time with everyone. It is impossible to answer all the phone calls and to be everywhere. And therefore, you have to categorize and prioritize what relationships are important because those relationships carries breakthroughs. It carries the double portion in your life. God can use any, anyone. He can use angels. We've seen in Cornelius, life of Cornelius, an angel appeared to him. But in the time we're living, God still chooses to use people. And it puts things in people that you need. And they are the key to the breakthrough. They're the key to the next door. In the natural, I'm assigned to my wife. But in the spirit, I'm assigned to Prophet Ed. And that relationship is an important relationship in my life. Prophet Ed shared yesterday how I would travel internationally and I would find him in different nations. So often I meet him in Germany or in Switzerland. I go there on my own expense because that relationship is important for me to be there because he carries something in him that is a key to me to my next season. So that, that relationship is a priority. I ministered in a city called Kimberley in South Africa just before I came. And Kimberley is an area where one of the biggest diamonds, diamond mines is in South Africa. And uh, I went there for the first time and they took me on a tour in this diamond mine. And as we went through this tour, um, they explained how only diamonds can cut diamonds. There's people that's in your life that has no effect upon you. And there's people that's in your life that you have no effect on. And it's important to surround yourself with diamonds, with people that can cut you, people that can grow you, that can strengthen you in your life. Now, I want you to prioritize that in your life. There's so many people right now in your life. There's so many people that want your attention, want a piece of you. Everyone is inviting you, and you cannot be everywhere. And therefore, it's important in the beginning to prioritize and realize these relationships are important. Now, the same way that you are being assigned to someone, that can be more than one person. That person that you are assigned to is a mentor. It is a, it is a, a pastor. It is a friendship. It's someone that you're being assigned to in this season. In the same way, there's people that's being assigned to you in this season. And I want you to identify as well who is God putting in your life in this moment. Because it's important for you to make yourself available, not to everyone, but to those people. Because you carry their double portion in you. And it's important to make yourself available so that they can have access to you and spend time with you. So that the keys and the doors that need to be opened to them can be released and be opened. Now, when you don't identify these things, you'll be running around this here, and you'll be every, everywhere, but eventually nowhere. <laughs> so it's important to realize who's God assigning me to. So I want to ask you this question 
to identify in your own life. And even as you're in a family, I want you as a couple uh, this morning after the service to sit down and say, who's God assigning us to in this year? Who's the people that is surrounded? Now, it's very easy. Look at the people that's surrounding you. Look at the people that you can see there's a pool there. You can see there's a hunger and a desire there. Identify those people and make sure that those relationships are a priority in your life at this moment. Now also, the people that you are being assigned to. It's very important for us to know that we make sacrifices for those relationships. Those relationships is not necessarily the most easy relationships to maintain. It's relationships where we have to say no to other things so we can say yes to that relationship, to be there and show up in that place. But that sacrifice comes with a reward. It comes with a blessing because it's connected to that. So God has placed something in those people that is a key to that. You know, there's just some doors in my life that I cannot open. And Prophet Ed has the key to those doors. And when I'm connected to those relationships, I walk into that place because he has access to those doors. In the same way, there's people in my life that don't have access to the places that I have access to or access to the people that I have access to. But because they are placed in my life, they can easily walk with me into this place. I remember I have a spiritual son in South Africa, and uh, in, in, in the future I'll bring him um, one day. He's evangelist in South Africa. And I remember going to a conference last year, and I'm invited to this conference, but my son is, my spiritual son is not invited. And as we walked into this room with all our top leaders in South Africa, immediately he just broke out in a cold sweat because he's intimidated by everyone. And they had a seat reserved for me right in front. And as I walked in, they looked at him immediately and they don't know who he is and he's not invited into that meeting or into that place. So they asked him, where is your invitation? And he stood for a second and I responded and I said, he's with me. And immediately they brought a chair from the back and they put it right next to me because of that relationship. So I took him into a place that is not invited because of a relationship. And that's why what I want to share with you, that there's people that has access to places that you don't have access to right now. And those relationships are important because they will take you to places that might be impossible to you right now. But you have to be there and you have to show up. Now, in the same way that we are being assigned to people and people are being assigned to us in our life, God has assigned the Holy Spirit to us. He has seen this Holy Spirit and His Holy Spirit has an assignment to never leave us and to never forsake us. To be with us 24 hours a day and to be dedicated and committed to us. Now, I want you to read with me in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, 27. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes uh, for us through wordless groans. Now, if we read the scripture, we see that the Spirit of God is interceding and praying, but praying with wordless groans, not just light prayers. He's pressing in. He's pushing forward. He's calling out to God on our behalf. And we have a Holy Spirit that is assigned to us. And that's why I'm saying this morning, don't lose your hunger or respect and honor for the Holy Spirit because He's been assigned to you. And even though you go to bed at night and sleep, he never sleeps. He continues to pray. He continues to press on for what you really need and what you're going through. I remember a time last year where I walked on the farm. And as I walked on the farm, suddenly I felt an impression from the Holy Spirit just to pray in tongues. And immediately I thought, I wonder if something's wrong with my family. And I, and I just felt just pray. So I walked on the farm and just started to pray in tongues and for about five minutes and it left. A week later, I was invited to a meeting. A lady that I've met, she closed the president of our nation and also our government officials. She buys the clothing for them. And this lady invited me to her home. And when I arrived a week later at her home and I walked into the living room, all our parliament members were sitting there. 
minister of finances, the minister of health, and she said, I've invited you to this meeting tonight because I want you to minister to them prophetically. Immediately, suddenly I became anxious. I saw a, a specific man and I received a word as I walked in. I got a word for him and I didn't know how he would take it. You know, this is government officials. They can make my life hell in South Africa. <laughs> so I looked at him and immediately became anxious. And I said to this lady, just give me five minutes so I can prepare my spirit. I walked outside in the parking and just started to pray in tongues. And I said, God, you have to help me. I have an opportunity to speak into these people's lives. Give me wisdom. Give me a word for them. And I walked up and down and just started to pray in tongues intensively. As I prayed in tongues, God spoke to me. He said, Andre, what are you doing? I said, God, um, I'm preparing my spirit. I'm going into this meeting. I have to be ready. And God said to me, Andre, do you remember a week ago when you walked on the farm and I impressed it on you to pray? I said, yes, I remember. He said it was for this meeting. I prepared you for this moment so you can go in and you can minister the word with boldness. Now I'm walking up and down in the parking and praying intensively. I said, God, why am I praying now? He said, That's, this is for next week. I'll, I'll share later with you <laughs> where you go, <laughs> what, is, what is coming. But suddenly the atmosphere changed. The anxiousness left, the fear left, and confidence and boldness came upon me. And I knew that God had prepared me a week ago to go into this meeting and to be ready to, to bring the word and to be effective for his kingdom. Now, in the same way, the Holy Spirit is interceding for you. And he is preparing you for things to come. It is never God's desire for us to be unprepared. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be prepared. And there is these moments where the Holy Spirit prompts you, where he speaks to you. And he says, pray right now. This might be early in the morning, late at night, midday. Just pray at that moment. I remember one night I woke up and uh, um, God spoke to me. He said, I want you to pray for a nation. And I was I'm still sleepy and I walked to my office and I've got this big ball, the earth, a um, uh, light bulb, and I just spinned it and uh, I stopped it at a, at a nation in Switzerland. And God said, just pray for that nation. And I prayed, 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 and God said, okay, go to bed. And I went to sleep. I don't know anyone in Switzerland. I don't know what language they speak. I don't know where it is. First time I even saw it on the map. Two years later, I remember walking through the borders of, Swiss, of Switzerland. And as I walked through the border and they stamped my passport, I remember that night. And God said to me, I've prepared this nation for you. You are ready to go in and bring the word in this place. Amen? Now, this is not just applicable to Christianity or to church. There's meetings that you are going into this year where the Holy Spirit is preparing you for in advance to be able to access supernatural wisdom in that meeting. Even though it's a corporate meeting and there might be, it might be a room full of unbelievers, God is giving you the wisdom for that moment to speak the right word and to make the right choices at that moment. But you have to be sensitive for the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Promptings. Just pray. Don't try to figure out. You know, often when we get this feeling or experience that we need to pray, immediately we, we, our first reaction is fear. We think immediately, what's wrong? What is happening? What's, what's, go, what's going on? Just pray. Just pray in that moment. And as you pray, you will feel it lift from you. Just pray. Because you will see soon how you're going into a situation and God has prepared you for that moment to step in and to be the best that you can be for that meeting or that place. As people here today that is in business, and I want you specifically, I'm speaking to you this morning because the Holy Spirit is preparing you. You know, being a child of God gives you an unfair advantage. You've got access to supernatural wisdom. You've got access to something beyond the natural. People on earth only have access to information, but we have access to, to supernatural wisdom that goes beyond that. Because we have a father that, that sees into the future, that's already in that meeting, that's already in that place. And we have access to that right now. We're living in a time of information. 
Today you can go onto YouTube or Google and immediately you can get an answer of things. You know, recently they've rated that the best um, Bible application is not apps anymore, it's Google. People who use that have information in a second they have it available to them. I would have thought of all this information, we would have been a lot further by now, but we are not. Because information does not bring transformation. Our minds are not renewed by disciplines and doctrines, but by the presence of God. When we spend time with God, we get renewed. Romans says that, that we do not be transformed, Romans 12, by the, uh, do not be transformed by? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do not be transformed um, by the? Can someone quote it for me? Thank you. Do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. That transformation takes place in the presence of God. When we're in His presence, we are being transformed. We have a hunger and desire for God to come and meet us. You know, the, the law of faith is connected to expectation. If we have expectancy then faith is released. Then God comes and does the supernatural in your life. The Holy Spirit is preparing you for what is coming in this year, in this season of your life. I want you to, after the meeting specifically, to make a list and look at these things to make it easy for you this year. And remember that those relationships are a priority. That is the phone calls that you take. That is the meetings that you respond to, to be there for those, for those moments in your life. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, I pray with every person in this room right now. Lord, thank you for your wisdom that is available to us. Father, I want to thank you for your Holy Spirit that you have sent. And thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is committed to us. Father, he is dedicated to us. And he's assigned to us to be with us in this life. Father, I pray that you will make us sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit to respond to what the Holy Spirit is saying and what he's doing at this moment. I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I remember I shared this testimony with you quickly because I sense, uh, I sense that the Holy Spirit is prompting things and you need to know what the result is of that and what is happening. I remember getting back last year from a trip and as I arrived in Johannesburg, I haven't been home for two weeks and I'm tired, I haven't seen my family. And I said, as I arrived, um, it was a Sunday, I arrived at 5 p.m. As I arrived, the Lord spoke to me and said, Andre, I want you to go to church. I said, God, I'm tired. I've been away for, for two weeks. And uh, he said, I want you to go. I said, Lord, even if I, <laughs> even if I go now, I'm going to be late. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to get there at the end of the meeting. He said, this is what I want you to do. It's the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I went back home and um, I took a shower and it wouldn't leave me. So eventually I said to my wife, I said to her, I know I just came back, but I have to go. <laughs> I have to get in the car. I need to be at the meeting tonight and it's far. You know, <laughs> our church is an hour and a half drive from our home. It takes us an hour and a half to get there. So I got into the car and I, I drove. And I got to the meeting and as I walked into the meeting, it, they, it, the, the service ended. But they had a guest speaker there. When I walked in, the guest speaker looked at me and he called me right to the front, from the back of the church as I arrived. And he said to me, it's interesting to see you here. He says, because today I was in a store and the Lord told me to buy you a gift. And I forgot about it. But when I see you here now, I'm reminded of that. So I'm standing in front of the church and I don't know what to do. Uh, so he says he forgot about it. And uh, this man saved, I don't know how long, to buy himself a watch, a Breitling watch. And um, he's, the Holy Spirit says to him, what is on your arm? So he looks at the watch that he bought for himself, and the Holy Spirit says, give it to him. And uh, so he blesses me with this, this watch, and I, I've never had something like that in my life, and I didn't know it's that expensive. So he blesses me with this $6,000, $7,000 watch, gives it to me. Now, to be honest with you, if God told me when I arrived in Johannesburg, if God said to me, Andre, I want you to go to church because you're going to get a watch, I would have gone. Uh, I would have complained. I wouldn't have said anything. I, I'll be there. Okay? And I want you to understand this, that often 
It is in, this, in the times in your life where you have valid excuses where the greatest breakthroughs comes in your life. Now, it is, it is something that escalates in something greater. I had the watch for two weeks. And after two weeks, I was in a meeting and a pastor couple, a business couple, God called them in the meeting to ministry. And they just resigned in the meeting, resigned their work and their business, and they decided to go into full-time ministry in the meeting. And as they decided to do that, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Andre, the watch that you got two weeks ago, it's for this man. So I want you to give it to him. <laughs> so I said, yes, Lord. And God said to me, Andre, and not just your watch, your car as well. So Zandia, my wife, is in the nursery. So I text her in church. I said, listen, this is what God is saying to me. What do you say? I mean, uh, so she said, definitely. Yes, if God's saying, we have to do it. So I got up and I gave the watch to this, this pastor that's, that's going to ministry now. It's being launched. And I gave him my car. And he has left. About six months later, I was in a meeting ministering in a rural area in South Africa. It's in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing. There's only people there, nothing else. And I'm in this area, and as I'm in this meeting, um, I complained. And uh, I said, Lord, before the meeting, I said, God, you know, I've sown this seed, but it hasn't produced anything. And I said, God, I, just, I don't know how it works because, you know, your word says if we sow, it will produce. And while I'm in this meeting... A man, the man that I sewed the vehicle and the watch, walks into the meeting. Now, he stays about eight hours drive from this town. He walks into the meeting at that moment. So I'm amazed, and I call him to the front, and I say to him, come and share the testimony of what God has done in your life. So he looks at me, he says, he says Prophet, I have to, I have to um, I, I'm sorry, but I don't have the watch anymore. He says, I sold it. He says, but what I want to tell you is that I took the money and I built a church. And, uh, and he started to share the testimony of that. And then God corrected me and God said to me, he says, you say that there's no harvest, but don't you realize that this seed has built a church and your harvest is souls. It's, produced, it's producing souls. Okay? Now, the reason why I'm saying it is important to respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit is because the testimony escalates. There's some things that God gives to you right now, but it's not yours. It's meant for someone else. And God uses it to move on. And that is the most precious thing that we can do with souls. You know, the anointing is the most precious commodity. There's nothing more precious than that. Wealth does not break yokes. Fame does not break yokes. Anointing breaks yokes. That breaks yokes. It's the highest commodity. And it's important for us to be connected to souls. And I'm sharing this with you because this church is. This is a ministry that's reaching souls. Not just in this city, but it's reaching out to places in the world. And it's impacting places. And souls are being touched. And you are part of that. Amen? Okay. Let's minister. Thank you. Rob, please stand. Thank you, Father. Rob, are you married? No. Not? Okay. Never been married? Never been married. How old are you? 32. 32, okay. 32, 32 Rob. Not married, 32. <laughs> um, I, I'm excited about what God is doing with you right now. You're at a place where you've become very comfortable. Now you're very good with what you do. Very good. You can sell anything, not just cars. You can sell anything. Anything can be sold. But you've become comfortable in that place and that position. Now, since how God is coming in this season and God is stirring up things in your life and God is saying, there's more, there's more. I want you to move forward. I see studies that's coming back and there's some courses that's coming and you'll study and you'll prepare because there's a higher position that God has for you and that position will require a next level of education. I want to encourage you to take it and take hold of it and to go and not to get stuck in a place where it's comfortable and where you're good with what you do. Now, God is taking you to a, a level now. You, uh, what I sense in the spirit is that you like competition. You like competition. Very competitive things. And uh, not, I'm talking about specifically your work situation. You're always competitive and looking and rating and looking where you are. And that's the drive that you have. But God is coming and I see that he's placing you on a completely different chart. Completely different thing. 
And God's saying that I don't want you to measure yourself or be competitive to where people are because I'm going to take you to a completely different level. The competition is completely going to change. I'm going to put you in a position and you'll compete with people that's a completely different level. But you have to be educated and prepared to go into that place and where you are. This is the, the area that God has for you, definitely where you are. But there's promotions that's coming. It's not going to come easy. You're going to fight for those promotions. You're going to go for it. But God is going to stand by you. It's going to help you to push forward and to break through in your life. Are you in, in no type of relationship right now? Do you have a girlfriend? Nothing. I have a baby daughter. You have a baby daughter, but not, okay. Your baby daughter, that's the relationship that you have. <laughs> okay, okay. I pray for that area specifically in your life today because that is your weakness, is relationships. You're very strong on, on the other area, but there it seems that every time when it comes to relationships, you just get confused <laughs> by the choices that you make. I pray that God would come and it would bring stability in your life on both sides of where you need to be in that. There is some challenges in your workplace and where you are, and I want you to know I see two waves coming that's hitting you from the front, but I want you to know that God's going to see you through. And you're not someone that runs or that quits or that backs off. God will see you through. But what is very important is for you to be careful what you say. Be careful. Because you, get, you react in a way and then you say things. And those things, it's like negative seeds is being sown into the ground. And that the enemy is looking for things to hold against you. And there's nothing at this moment. And he's trying to get words from you that he can work, hold against you. If I say the enemy, I see it's people that's being used by the enemy in your workplace. They're waiting for you to say something to hold it against you. And God's teaching you in this season to, to have a guard in front of your mouth and to be careful of what you say and what you get involved. With. Do your work. Do the best that you can do because God will see you through into the future. There's many promotions that's waiting for you. Not just one. I see promotion after promotion after promotion. But it will come with a fight. It will come. But God is there and he's committed to you and to see you through in this season of your life. Okay. Bless you. Be seated. Thank you, Rob. Um, sir, at the back with the green, with the green um, shirt. What's your name? Yes. Danny. And next to you? My wife. Your? Your wife? Mm -hmm. What's your name? Anne. Anne, Danny and Anne. Okay, how long are you married? 20, 28 years. 28 years. Let's give them a hand. That's a long time. <laughs> we live in a, a city in South Africa called Muscle Bay. And uh, um, it's very quiet. It's actually a retired area. And uh, I walked on the beach the other day, and a, a man came to me, approached me, and he said to me, he says, ask me how long I'm married. So I said, how long are you married? He says, 40 years today. So I said, well, congratulations. So I said to him, how, uh, how long uh, does it feel? Does it, does it feel quickly? He says, no, time goes by quickly. He says, it feels like five minutes. That's it. He says, five minutes underwater. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> I trust that's not your, your case or your, your situation. What do you do for a living? I'm an electrician. Eh? Electrician. Electrician. No, what do you do? I am an elementary school principal. Okay. Exactly where you need to be, both of you, exactly in the streams that God has for you at this moment. Now, there's many things that has been stolen from you right through your life, from the beginning. You're a very hard worker, very hard worker. But you're not being, um, you're not receiving the blessings in the way that you should. And God wants to say to stop to that. He wants to bring the breakthroughs that's supposed to be yours. You are God's peacemaker. And that's the area where God is using. You will fight for peace even though it costs you a lot. And this is what has happened in the past is you've protected people, you've protected relationships, and in that you've, you've brought great harm to yourself in that. But you are God's peacemaker. And even though you've done that and you've lost, God will restore back to you into your life. I hear that, I see that there is relationships with people that specifically regarding your family as well, the people that bridges that's burned, they are out of relationship. They're not talking to each other at the moment. And this is the area in your life where God will use you, not just in your family, but with people to connect people, to get them together. There's places 
uh, of people that they won't sit together at the same table. But God will use you as a bridge between them to sit and to make peace and to communicate. You are God's peacemaker. And know today that God is using you in that. Now, in your job situation, there's a place where God is going to intervene. He's going to rescue you. You're putting in all the effort and all the work and that, but you're not being rewarded for everything and time and energy you place. That's a story of your life. I mean, you've been very, very hard work right through your life, working, working, and then someone else gets the promotion, someone else gets the breakthrough, someone else gets the honor. And God says that this year, specifically 2019, is the year where, where, you, will, where, where you will receive the honor that is due to you and the breakthrough that is due to you. Ma'am, you, you're a school principal, is that what you are? <laughs> you're very, very strict, I mean, the way you, you do things and act, but that's who God has made you. And what I like about you is that you are straight. There's a, you're a woman, a woman of truth, and um, what, what people see is what they get. There's nothing else. Truth comes forward. And you'll tell people exactly what, what you see and, and what you experience now. That is the exact way how God is using you. Now, you don't like conflict. You don't like to fight. You don't like to handle that. But somehow there's always conflict around you, always. And you're saying, I hear you praying. You're saying, God, I don't want to do this. I want to I love people. I want to know, be known for someone that loves and that have compassion with people. And that's not where I'm right now. And God's saying, no, no, it's, I'm, I'm using you exactly where you are. Because even though you are strict and straight, there's still a, a mother's love that comes through that. And God uses that. You know, some people need to hear it just in a straight way. They need to hear that. And that helps them to step into the place where they need to be. God has given you a gift of releasing people's potential that they have. And when you look at people, you see what they can be and where they can go in life. And it frustrates you to see people with potential that's not walking in that potential. There's a, there's a godly frustration that comes in you. And that's the area where God is using you to activate that potential, to help them. Now, there's a change that's coming to your wording or the, word that, the way that you speak things. There's some confusion where you say things and people hear something different. But God will help you in that so that when your words goes out, even though it's strict, it will help to bring people back into line in where they need to be immediately. You've made a very big impact in people's lives, very big. And you need to know that. Don't think and don't look at yourself that you're not doing what you're supposed to do, exactly where God wants you to be, and you're making a big a big impact. I see people coming back and it's a time of harvest of pe people coming back to you and, and giving and uh, saying thank you. Saying thank you for what you've done at the right time you've been there. It was not easy and it's not easy for you to handle that conflict. But I want to say to you that you've handled it very well. Both of you not good with conflict. You don't like it. But you're sitting in those situations constantly where you have to face these things and that. It will end. It will not be you know, for the rest of your life. There's some situations in your life right now with people that need to be confronted. They're stepping on you. They're walking over you. And you have to confront it. You have to make it clear the boundaries that's there. God wants you to stand in that position and to stand with it in authority. I see a greater level of authority that's being released over your life as I speak to you right now. Okay. Bless you. Amen. I, I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I sense that there's people here specifically this morning that's in relationships or friendships, but it is destroying you. And this is not people that's married. I see it's a relationship or a friendship, and it has a very bad impact upon you. And God is not, this is not the first time that God is speaking to you. He's been speaking to you several times about that relationship and the effect that it has upon you. I want to I remind you this morning that that negative relationship has the power to destroy your destiny, to destroy what God has for you. And I want to remind you again of that this morning. Again, it's not married people. I sense it's people that's in relationship with friendships, but it is polluting. It is destroying. Remember what I shared this morning. Diamonds cuts diamonds. That relationship is not worth it. 
It is only polluting you and pulling you away from what God has for you. Give those people to God. Bless them and pray for them, but hand them over to God. Say, God, I give them to you, but I can no longer be in that relationship. This is a sense, it's the second or third time that God is speaking to you about that. And I pick it, it's more than one person here. And I want to remind you, I want to plead with you, get out of that relationship. It's not good for you. Get out of that friendship. It has a bad and negative effect upon your life. Okay, amen. What's your name, ma'am? Lori, would you please stand? You married? Yes. Where is he? To are you married? What's his name? The person? Yeah, yeah. Where is he? Where is he at the moment? Is he here? Yeah, he's at home. At home. And what's he doing at home? Uh, sleeping. Sleeping. Okay. He's, he's not in the church? Uh, yeah, he's Catholic. Okay. Doesn't matter. God can still touch him. <laughs> I was in New York on a, on a conference. And um, um, we prayed for sick people. And uh, it was, uh, they, we, we asked people that are sick to stand. And um, there was a, a man that was Catholic. So I was a, just a guest minister in the church. So the pastor of the church said to him, um, because he's Catholic, he said, God can't heal you, just sit down. And we prayed for the rest of the people. And as that happened, the Lord said to me, I want you to pray for him because I'm going to heal him today. And I'm going to show the people the grace that I have for people. So I asked him to stand up, and God healed him right there. God didn't say, first convert, then I'll heal you. He said, are you ready to receive healing? And that grace changed his life completely. And today he's serving God because of the grace that God showed to him that day. Now the reason why I'm asking you about your husband is I sense that God is knocking on his door. I see that God is calling him, calling him, calling him. He is a man of wisdom and integrity. He's a good man. He's got a very good heart, very pure motive in the way that he does things. But God is calling him, calling him back. The greatest harm that was done to him is the words that were spoken over, over his life, things that people said. Now, he can handle those things, but I see it's still going into his heart. And it's, I see the scars in his heart because of that. And so this morning, I want to ask you, not to do what the rest of the people were doing in the past. Don't speak against him. Don't speak a negative word over him. Bless him. You know, love is going to change him. Grace is going to change him. Now, I see him in church right now. I see a vision. I see him standing with you. I see him here. I see him in church. And so this morning, I declare that the day will come and the time will come where you will serve God together. Together as a family, you will stand in the presence of God. Amen. Bless you. Okay. Mm. There's some things that you've given. I see you prayed and prayed and then you gave up. Not just this one situation, other things as well in your life. And God is fanning the flame again in your life to trust Him. Um, you're very, um, uh, I see the way you think and do things. You're very, um, you do calculated things. Everything is calculated, worked out and planned way ahead of time. But there is some shakings that's coming and God is teaching you to live by faith and to step. It doesn't matter what circumstances, what happens in circumstances. It's not supposed to bring fear or anxiety upon us. And right now, there's a shaking in your circumstances, a, sh a shaking in your husband's life. But know that God will see you through and that he is with you. There's a door that you've opened for God to enter your home. And God will use any opportunity. The Holy Spirit will use any opportunity that he can get. And that door is open. And know today that God is busy working in your life in this moment and in your household. Okay? Bless you. You be seated. Thank you, ma'am. What's your name? What's your name with the green shirt? Yes. Jeremy. Jeremy. What do you do for a living, Jeremy? Pest control. Pest control. <laughs> Are you married? Yes. Uh, really? She's at our home church, though, in Sanctuary. Okay. Are you a visitor here this morning? Yeah, I've been here all weekend. All weekend. Just for the weekend? Just for the weekend. We are welcome. What I love about you and what God loves about you is your passion. You know, you make the best of everything. And it's not just this season of your life. That's the story of your life. You went through things in your life that other people went through and they did not survive. But you went through it and you just made the best of it. You just looked at the best side of it. And because of that, I'm here this morning to say to you that things are about to change for you. 
things are about to change for the good because of your attitude and because of your motive towards how things pan out. I see just <laughs> waves hitting you from all sides, all sides, and you keep on getting up. It's like you don't know when to quit. You just get up and move on and get up and move on, and that's Christ-like. That's what God loves about you, the fight that's in you, not just for you, but for other people as well. I want to thank you today for not giving up on people. What I love about you is the fact that you have never judged anyone. You don't judge people. Other people have judged them. They've thrown them away. They've made excuses, but you've been there. You've showed up and you've, you have been Christ to many people over and over. And because of that, God is saying that he can trust you with more, especially with people. I see that it doesn't matter where you are, people gravitate towards you. They want to be with you. They want to be close to you just because of what you carry. Now, I don't know if you know it, but you are called to be an evangelist. That's the calling that's upon your life. Evangelism, to evangelize. And God is putting, putting it inside you. Now, the best evangelism is not the words that we preach, but the life that we live. And that's who you are. It's not about the words or preaching on a stage. It's living a life that's motivating, that's encouraging other people, that's showing them the way. And that's what you have been doing. Now, you have been impacting people's lives wherever you go. I see you doing site visits and going to people. And when you leave, there's a residue of the presence of God in that place because you've been sent there. Now, I see your calendar and your appointments that you're making every morning. And in the same way, I see God's schedule for you. And I see how God is setting things up for you. And where you go, God's using you. You're doing your daily jobs and you're doing what you need to do. But in the midst of it, every day, God is setting you up with people. The right place at the right time. Speaking to the most interesting people you know, that you encounter on the road in your life. But God is using those moments for you to speak into their lives and to plant a seed. This morning, I want to say to you that God is so, is so happy and proud of you and what you've done with what you've had. You did not have a lot, but you made the best of it. But I declare this morning, it is time for overflow in your life. It's time to have more than enough, more than enough. I see a financial breakthrough that's coming. I see your hands this morning, and I see gold that's dripping from your hands, dripping, dripping, dripping. And God is saying that he's going to entrust you, entrust you with way more than you thought you would ever be able to have. I see commitments that you've made to God, things that you said. You said, God, if I have this, I'll do this. I'll do this. I'm going to do this for your kingdom. And God says, yes, you have heard correctly because those things he has planted in your spirit. And he said, I will use that. There's been a curse upon your family, a curse, your entire family. But God has, has <laughs> I see one man that is born in that family that's breaking that curse. Yeah. You broke that curse. Yeah. You broke it completely. And so I declare, I declare this morning, I want you to know that every curse or neg negative thing that was over your family, generationally, it is broken. It is set free because of someone that pursued God, sought after God. Okay? Okay, where's your wife? She's at her home church. Okay, she's there right now? Yeah, she's coming tonight. Though. She's coming tonight. Okay, I would love to, please come before the meeting tonight. I would love to pray with you and your wife specifically. I would love to pray with you. Your wife is, um, um, <laughs> it's very interesting, the two of you. I don't know how you met, where, where you met. <laughs> where did you meet? Uh, back when MySpace was a thing. <laughs> Uh, okay. It's been a while. <laughs> it's a it's a very She's Italian and I'm Irish so we Okay. She's know. Italian and you Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <a> terrible combination. <laughs> We, oh. we, we joked how our kids would come out with a, a switchblade and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> we don't drink that. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Your wife has a very gentle spirit. She can fight and she can have it, but she's gentle on the inside. And right now she's tired. She's very tired and she's yeah. been fighting these things and it's been tough for her. Now, it's, it, being married to you has been an adventure. I mean, it's... It's, it's one way of saying it. She never expected that and she's tired and uh, she's got a gentle spirit and so tonight I want to pray with her. I see a change that's coming with a spiritual family in your life. 
God is putting new people. This message, when we preach these messages, it's prophetic. It's prophetic. You need to prioritize who God is assigning to your life in this season. You need to try to value it. See, who is God placing in my life? Because I see when it comes to a spiritual family, there's new people that God is assigning to you. And you need to identify that because they carry your double portion. Okay. Bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> Irish. Very interesting. What's your name, sir, with the, the black shirt? My name is James. James and? James and Joanna. Jo Joanna. Okay. And you married yes. legally. Yes. You know, yes. in Africa, um, it is common for people to have more than one wife. They have seven, eight wives. So it's very strange, not in my culture, but it's common. And uh, so it's very, you know, when we minister to people, often we have the, we have the husband and we have the seven wives. So they're all <laughs> there at the same time. <laughs> so, so we ask. And also in South Africa... Um, because of um, uh, legal things, um, when, you, when you take a wife, you have to pay the father for her. And so often people are in relationships and they're not married yet because they don't have enough money for that. So they stay together until they, have they will work their entire lives to pay for that wife. Um, so and they, they live in sin and it's challenging to deal with that because it's not, it's not biblical. And uh, yet that is the culture that we're facing with the minister. Our president has 15 wives. So it's, it's, it's normal to them. And uh, it's, it's very different. So we ask, you know, legally or not, it's, it's a very important question <laughs> to ask people. <laughs> Amen. You know, I can barely handle one wife. I don't know how they do it with, like, like <laughs> say, but anyway. What do you do for a living, sir? Uh, I'm in the military. Military. And you? A homemaker. What have you done before that, before the military? Um, I just went to high school, and um, when I joined the military, I started as an infantryman. Okay. And uh, I did nine years as an infantryman, and then I reclassified to electronic warfare. Okay. So now I'm uh, electronic warfare here at the cyber school. Okay. I have absolutely no idea what that means, but, <laughs> but, but we'll, we'll go on. It's free. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, children. Do you have any children? Yes, we have one daughter, Azriel. One daughter. How old is she? She's eight. Eight years old. You planning any more children? Uh, we we have been trying. We've been trying. Okay, so you want more children. Both of you. It's time for another child. It's time for that. And so this morning, I'm praying for that specifically. You will not just try. It will come forth. It's God's plan for you. Now, I want you to know nothing is wrong with you. Nothing. Don't take that. The enemy wants us to take the blame and to accept it. Do not accept that. Nothing is wrong with you. This is a spiritual thing that's connected to that. And the birth of the second child will be a complete change to your lives. And it will come and it will happen. And so this morning I stand with you and I declare the time will come, the date will come, where you will have a second child. That second child will be a promised child in your life. It will be a beacon of hope and it will remind you of the promises that God has for you in your future. Amen. Pastor Amy. Amen. Amen. Just stand with her. Just stand with her. Just put your hands upon her. I see it in the future. You're going to give you the testimony will come back of what God has done. I want you to stretch out your hands to her. Father, we pray for this couple. Father, their greatest desire right now is a child. It's nothing more, more precious to them at this moment. And Father, I declare right now that it's your plan and your will for them to have more children. Father, we thank you for the child that is coming, Father. Thank you, Lord, for a perfect child, a healthy child. No complications, Lord. And Father, we speak to both of them right now, and I release them, Father, from any negative connotation that's limiting them Father, to step into abundance and into fruitfulness in their lives. Father, we pray for her right now and we speak to that womb and we declare that it will be fruitful and it will produce in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> you can just remain standing. Just stand. I want to ask you if you are in this room, and you are trusting God for another child, and you are married, 
And I want to ask you to please stand. Please stand right now. We're going to pray. There's anointing for children right now. Make sure you're married. Just make sure that both of you are on the same page. Are you standing, Pastor? Okay. 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 Just stand. Just stand. Listen. <clears throat> I want to, uh, I'm, I'm picking up something in the spirit, and I want you to understand this. I prayed for a group of men one day for receiving the Holy Spirit. And as I prayed, a man burst out in anger and he said the following thing. He said, how many times more do I have to stand to receive the Spirit? And I said to him, listen, you remain standing until you receive. So when you're trusting for a breakthrough, every opportunity that you get, you take that opportunity. Every opportunity. When you're trusting for healing, when they're praying for healing, you stand. You continue to stand. You continue to stand. You get people to pray in that moment until the breakthrough comes. Keep on praying. Keep on standing until it comes, until it happens. Do not get tired. Take the opportunity. Amen? I sense in the Spirit, this is what I pick up, is that there is anointing for babies. There's anointing for children. And so we touch that right now, that God will produce that. He will do it. Father, I pray right now, Lord, for every person standing, Father, we pray for these couples, Lord. Father, they desire for children. Father, it doesn't matter what the report says, Father. Your word says that it's possible. Father, everything is possible with you. Father, we speak to those wombs right now. And we declare in Jesus' name that it is fruitful, Father. Father, I declare that you unlock those wombs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray it. For these children, healthy children. For, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies. I can hear the testimonies in the spirit of coming back. The joy in the spirit of that God has been faithful. God has been faithful. Here is the evidence. Here is the testimony of what God has done. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, that healthy children will be born in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Just remain standing. I can just stand for another second, both of you. Um, are you, uh, where's your parents? Where's your parents? Oh, yes. In San Diego. Are they married? Yeah. They're married? Okay, legally. <laughs> just making sure. Okay. They're going through a tough time at this, at this moment, your parents. And there's this responsibility upon you. You're very responsible from a young age. And you feel that you have to be responsible for everyone regarding your family. You have to help. You have to be there. You have to be the one that has all the answers. Now, since that this burden is, up, is upon you, and God wants you to release them. Now, everything is going to work out for them. They're going through things right now, but God is teaching them things, and He is very gentle with them at this moment. But God wants to take the responsibility off you of feeling, I see it's a guilt. There's guilt upon you that you're feeling that you're not there. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. And that's not true. Your focus right now is your family. Your focus is to be here, to be the homemaker right here. That is the focus and where God wants you to be. And God wants to remove this burden from you. So as you are standing here this morning, I release you from any form of burden that's holding you back. Guilt. Guilt. People that are putting guilt, making you feel guilty of things. You cannot be everywhere. It's impossible. I see you, both of you are extremely busy. I don't know why you're so busy. You're everywhere, always busy doing things and there and there and that. And I sense that God is coming. And more than half of the things on your, on, your, on your calendar, God is removing that. There's no time of rest. You're just busy doing all these things and everywhere. And God is just clearing, clearing that. And the reason why he's doing it is because he wants to put fresh things and new things in there. He wants to bring changes to that. Now, both of you are planners. You both, I see you've got separate calendars and you're planning everything way ahead. So you are. But God wants you to learn to rely on Him and to trust Him. So there'll be some empty days and empty spaces. And God will reveal to you only the day when it comes what to do. And He wants you to lean on Him. He wants you to desire Him. Both of you have, have intimate relationships with God. And God speaks to you clearly. Both of you, clearly. But these challenges that you've been going through... The enemy wants to come in and he wants to bring space between you and God. In this year, and I want to share it with everyone that's here this morning, in this year 2019, don't allow 
the enemy to bring space between you and God. As soon as, as, as that comes in, remove it immediately. Don't allow it. Don't allow anything to become... Because the enemy uses it to bring guilt and bring separation between you and God. Don't allow it. Because there's an open communication between you and God and where God is speaking to you at this moment. I hear what you're doing and where you are and it's great for now. But it's something different that the Lord has for you in the future. I see both of you in the future and where you're working, but you are working together. Both of you are in it together. In whether it's a business or a place that you're working for in the future, you are doing it together. And I see both of you are involved in it and it's going to be a delight to you. It's really going to be a blessing to you in the future to be there. God is connecting you with, I want to say, godly relationships. There's some doors that's just opening to you that is supernatural. A supernatural thing that's happening. And it's God that's putting you in those places. I see you seated in a room and I see the people that's in the room and, and when I look at your qualification, it is impossible for you to be in that room. But God has reserved a chair for you. He has opened a spot for you. And God says that I see you there. And I qualify you to be in that room or to be in that place. And I will use you as a man of influence in that room and in that area. You're very calm in everything that you do. You know, some people drive too fast. You drive too slow. It's, it's very calm. It takes long to get your place in that calm. There's a calmness on you. But that is a gift that the Lord has given you. You have the ability not to stress or to get worried. There's a calmness that you carry. It just comes into the place. And that will be the thing that will speak for you in the corporate world and in people's lives. People will see the peace that you have and they will be drawn to you because of that peace. They will come and they will say, what, what is this? Where does that come from? And it will be an opportunity to minister to them, to tell them that this peace is the peace of God that is upon me. It's not me. God gives me this ability to remain calm and to make quality decisions even under pressure because of that. I speak a blessing over you as a family. And I thank God for the day where I will see your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here this morning. And I want to encourage you, we're not done yet. Tonight is the dessert. <laughs> it is the end. So we had a great start. We had a great main course. But tonight is the dessert. That's the Holy Spirit. That's when He comes and He shows up and He does only what He can do. So I want to invite you. Take the opportunity and also invite people. You know, one of the greatest things that you can do for other people is to bring them with you. To bring them into the presence. And when they're in the presence... They will be touched by the Holy Spirit and they will receive something from God. So I want to encourage you to invite people, but to especially invite those people that you never invite. That you never invite. Reach out to them. And we trust that when they're here tonight, that they will have an encounter with God and their lives will be completely transformed. We trust for that. Okay. Amen. Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.